Hello friends and indie fans and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be looking at dwarfs. Emphasis there is not mine. Um, basically what this is, the closest thing I could come up with to describe it is sort of like a tweak on a real-time strategy game. It's not exactly a real-time strategy game, but you kind of have to see what I'm talking about in the game proper to, to get why I said that. Um, so developed by Power of Two and uh, has a wealth of game modes and in fact let's look at the options menu just real quick to show you uh, quite how deep the support goes so we've got uh, obviously our resolutions full screen stuff warning durations and we've got a colorblind mode which is always nice and considerate uh, decorations HED scales all that good stuff sound options which are very well documented here we've got our gameplay options tooltip delay so they, they went all out, they really did all the good options that everybody needs to really get into what they're doing. Uh, we've got a skirmish mode, uh, we've got an arcade mode, which is actually basically the main mode. Uh, we've got our leaderboards and score stuff over here with medals and trophies. Base defense and our campaign mode, which I kind of would have expected this to be more called the challenge mode, but the campaign mode is essentially a bunch of tutorials and then challenges. So you would probably start here, if anything, and then eventually end up here. Uh, the codex also is where all the information that you unlock is going to end up, so you can actually go here for tutorials and helpful movies and stuff right in-game, which is kind of handy, I kind of like that. Uh, but let's just do an arcade mode game. Uh, I am not particularly good at this game, and I have to admit this isn't a fully blind video. I did have to mess around with it a little bit, because the learning curve is not bad, it's... Like I said before, it's, it's kind of sort of casual game, but it's not completely. You have to know a little bit of what you're doing. But I will do my best to quickly introduce this to you, and hopefully after watching this you should have a semi-decent idea of what's going on in the game. So obviously we start here at our Dwarf Fortress, if you'll pardon the expression. Um, and a couple of these guys show up, so this is one of our Digger Dwarves, and he's going to go right for this mine uh, mineral stuff. Or, and then our knight over here is going to watch out for any invaders, which so far there are none. Uh, this is going to keep spawning more digger dwarves, and these guys will act entirely on their own, uh, unless I intervene and tell them what to do, uh, which will basically be the crux of me. I mean, that's, that's the hardest part I have with this game, is really intervening effectively uh, once we start to get a lot of stuff going on on the board. Uh, so this was lucky. Our first cave that we've discovered is a treasure cave, so we definitely could use that nice treasure bonus right at the beginning. Uh, and our positioning is not bad, actually. We have a bunch of caves right around us. Now, obviously, it's going to generate this map uh, in a different way every single time, so the game is going to have nearly infinite replay value. And we're going to be looking to... Our goal, basically, is to live as long as possible, uh, don't get beaten by enemies, don't get flooded by lava or water, and make it as far out into this map as we can imagine uh, towards all the crazy ore, which looks like uh, fried gilded poo or something over here. Um, there are better or other types of ore in different directions, so the goal is to expand in every direction if possible. Now I can't spend too long over here away from my guys, because I do need to see what's going on, because they've already freaking hit a problem. That was really fast, actually. Uh, so what we do is, when there's water involved, we need to take one of our dudes here, set him up right in front of that, and use dynamite, no, use dynamite to blow it open, uh, and that will effectively kill our dwarf, and unfortunately it is just the nature of how this needs to work. So you go down, no, go down, and then you go over here, and then you can delete these arrows, because they're all going to want to walk on them later. Uh, with Q, and that puts that little X on the end of your arm. That, no, don't. Stop. Stop. Dynamite. Crap. Alright, I might already be screwed. Accidentally opened my help menu because all these tooltips keep showing up to try and help me. And uh, as much as I would normally appreciate that, uh, right now, not so much. Bad moment. So, um, now the situation's getting worse, I need to either funnel this stuff all down somehow into one corridor, or figure out a different way to deal with this. And uh, as, as I'm trying to deal with this problem, these guys are going to keep on going with their own issues and finding more problems for me to deal with, so things can very quickly spiral out of control if you don't stay on top of it. Now you do also need to be worried about spawning more 
knights to help you out because if you get overwhelmed by enemies that's going to be a problem as well uh, and since these guys do sort of autonomously walk around and come up with their own stuff they're going to eventually uh, start digging into these exact places where i don't want them to be so the only solution to that is to completely block off everything by using stone uh, which usually easier said than done because stone's kind of expensive so uh, what i would do in this case so they can't plant it on this, it's got to be only planted on solid areas like this. So I'd try and grab each spot, and I can just drag around it, trying to use as few of these blocks as possible, but you know, it's, it's not always possible to use very few. Um, somehow I've got to do... can I transfer? No, I can't transform these blocks though either. So I guess I have to just blow holes in like all of these tiles, so it means we're going to have a mass dwarf exodus here in a second. Uh, which I'm sure we can tolerate. Our fortress here uh, is going to generate more of them all the time anyway. Since apparently dwarves are spawned from straight up ale. Uh, but we probably knew that already. Alright, so that is relatively inaccessible. That should be inaccessible. Let's take another guy and bring him over here. Or maybe let's use this guy. So I'm, I'm still trying to watch out for my other guys here. Thankfully none of them are hitting caves, because as soon as they hit caves it's probably going to be a problem. Um, up here with you. And it costs money to just move these guys around even. So you got to be very careful. Oh, he just fell in the hole. Wow, he's pretty dumb. Yeah, so the uh, description of saying lemmings is pretty apt, I would have to agree. Uh, these guys are not much more intelligent than lemmings. But, you know, they love to dig. They're honest. They, uh, they have a good time. Alright, so that's all of it, I think. I don't think any of these can get out from here. Uh, oh, if this block broke, then that would be an issue, so I have to send one more guy, and this should be essentially blocked off entirely. Oh, great, we've got enemy minions. Alright, well, let's uh, finish what we're doing here, and then we'll go and deal with that issue as well. So yeah, this should be completely inaccessible now. They can't walk in through these holes, and they can't dig through these rocks. Uh, so, oh, we've got quite a few minions here. We're going to need more knights than that, or more warriors. Uh, what happened now? Oh, someone found lava. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, you go right here, and you blow this open. And then I have to do the same thing with the rocks again on this. Only it's a maybe even larger situation, so there's not a whole lot I can do. Yeah, I'm already out of money. Uh, so you can see pretty quickly this stuff can really get out of control. Um, and I, I still haven't even gotten to more of the serious caves. I mean, we're still pretty much right at the beginning. So this can burn right through these walls. It's going to hit this point right here and start falling into the pit. And we won't have much to worry about at that point. I think we're fairly safe from the lava, so we need to just keep our eyes on the big picture here. So it's funny, I've had a, quite a few people asking for different dwarf-based sort of strategy, real-timey games, and uh, things like Dwarf Fortress and Nomaria and the various uh, derivations of those types of games have come up. And yet, here I go, reviewing something nobody was asking for. <laughs> I find this was a, a pretty compelling looking game, though I actually quite like it. Uh, even though it may not be exactly my style per se, I do definitely appreciate... Oh, wonderful, he dug through a wall. Uh, I do appreciate the sort of chaos that goes on in this, and uh, the quick thinking that needs to be involved, and sometimes the cleverness and intuitiveness of uh, just sort of coming up with a solution on the fly, when you may have no idea really what you need to be doing, uh, because there's so many other factors to keep in mind. Um, and I'm just not particularly great at prioritizing a hundred different things at once. Like, I can multitask a little bit, but this is, like, way high-level multitasking for me. Uh, so I, I like to focus on one thing at a time, as you can see from the way I'm even playing this right now. I'm trying to keep my eyes open, but 
these guys are definitely going where they're going. 1,000 squares rewards. So you get little bonuses every now and then. You get trophies and achievements for doing things like blocking off water and lava tiles completely with uh, stone. And uh, all kinds of little bonuses happen just sort of as you're going. You gotta watch out though because I'm probably gonna hit something nasty sooner or later. What is this? She found a picture frame. I guess that's one of the decorations. Uh, this guy's making his way down to this quite large cave system. We're gonna send him on his way down. Lava's burned through something. Let's take a look. Oh, it's burned through another wall. I thought I was safe. So we've got a, basically an impending doom situation going already. Uh, and that's very common here. And now we've got water as well to worry about. I very quickly feel sort of defeated when I'm playing this game. Um, I get that it's like not... It's not supposed to give you that feeling. You're supposed to want to triumph over adversity, but a lot of the time I feel like I'm sort of overwhelmed uh, with all the different things I need to be worrying about at the same time. But like I said, it may just be because I'm not the type of person that plays these games. Uh, and hopefully you guys are. Because that would be the really the best reason for me to be making these videos, or at least this type of video for this genre of game. I feel bad blowing all my guys up like that. Uh, but it has to be done. And this is still going to break out in a second. Got to send another guy over here. It's sort of weird that these arrows just sort of stick around. I mean, I guess you can use them uh, to... Oh, wow, it's just breaking through everything. So I guess it eats through the walls, too, to some degree. But I would, I would like a, a mode or an option where I can just direct one guy at one time, or maybe select five or six of them. Because you can... I'm, I'm thinking with the way that the screen moves around, it's reminiscent of, like, the old Warcraft-style navigation system, and I, I sort of want to grab them in a box or something and tell them, all of you, go over here or something. Uh, but I did play quite a bit of Warcraft back in the day. There's Pooh here. This is not the Binding of Isaac. Alright, you go here. And you blow yourself up for my cause. I think the quickest and easiest way for me to sort of get what was going on here was to make this comparison, and, and I am trying to be sensitive here because I know that it's pretty annoying how I keep bringing it back to other games, but... Oh, this treasure's right here. I need to go get that. Um, I, I feel like this is sort of like looking at a cross-section of if you were inside of a giant mountain in Minecraft and there were like 30 players all going at the same time, or however many. Uh, so that I think that gives me sort of an easy explanation as to how to deal with, you know, the, the idea of this lava moving around and stuff. I mean, it, you just sort of have to visualize what kind of trouble you're getting yourself into each time. Is he seriously digging through the lava walls? Are you really that dumb, dude? Apparently he is. I don't quite understand this control mechanism here. It's very odd. Alright, well it's only a matter of time before this lava comes and kills all of us. Um, didn't even have a chance to plant dynamite on that one. Uh, and I can build one of these guys, uh, which is going to actually let me make, I guess, more warriors. Or it's going to keep generating them automatically for me, like a barracks, I guess you could call it. Probably has its own name if you just see yeah, an outpost. And I can speed up and slow down time, which, you know, is kind of important sometimes. Uh, right now it's set to a current multiplier of 5, which changes depending on the difficulty. And this is only set on normal. And I find it quite challenging. But again, I am still very early in my dwarf's experience. Uh, and this is a very experiential game. Once you learn exactly how to deal with all these problems, you're probably going to be much, much better off than I have been. And I can't say that this is... I mean, it's really, in theory, not that hard of a thing. It's just, you got to really wrap your mind around dealing with this many guys and problems at once. Achievement. What did I... Oh, okay, the lava just reached. 
So that's how the game ends when your ma uh, main fortress area gets taken over by, you know, water, lava, enemies, what have you. That will bring your game to a close. So then after that, you can look around, see what kind of damage you did to the map. Uh, we're zoomed out as far as we can go, but like, you can see this map goes on for quite a while. And reaching the outer limits of it will yield much, much more complicated cave systems and probably more complicated events as well. Uh, and obviously a lot more treasure, which you would need to really sustain yourself. Uh, I, I would guess as you go, what's going to happen is you're going to keep running into different water and lava systems, and you're going to need to block those off fairly quickly and effectively. Uh, and just essentially, it's sort of like Minesweeper. Uh, when you reach a point where you need to put the flags around everything, and you're like, okay, this section is now off limits. That's what's going to happen as you're doing this. So we're essentially playing like two-dimensional Minecraft Minesweeper or something. Sort of ironic that Minecraft and Minesweeper, yeah, both have mines in them. Different kind of mine. Same end result, everyone blowing up probably. Uh, but that's the way dwarves like it, so what can you do? So let's go back out to the main menu. I don't know, maybe I should check out one of these other modes. Let's see what the score system looks like. Uh, okay, so it keeps its own records for each mode, and then within each mode, each difficulty and duration. So there's a lot there. And then I guess you can check out your global multiplayer... No, not multiplayer, but uh, global scores on the online leaderboards. Keep our stats here, of course. So again, I'm still quite early in my experience. And then the uh, campaign obviously has a fair bit of tutorializing going on, which is definitely recommended. I mean, I did show you some of the basics of how to deal with different situations, but still I'm really bad at it, so you guys are going to want to go ahead and watch some of these uh, tutorials to get a good feel for it. And then our codex, of course. And it's kind of cool, they actually put in-game movies in it, so you can actually watch Move the camera around the map. Uh, how to deal with stuff right from inside of the game, so you don't even have to go up to YouTube. So it's a very well documented game, and it does definitely try its very hardest to make sure that it's accessible to its players. So I value that, and I hope you guys value that. And I would definitely recommend that you check this out if you're the type that likes these real-time strategy games. I, I am sometimes, I am not other times. I mean, I enjoyed this to a degree, but it's just so frantic with the, the amount of management. Um, I think just inherently it's the type of thing that sort of I find a little frustrating, but I know that a lot of you guys are really good at this stuff. I mean, I've seen you all play StarCraft and stuff. It's definitely within the realm of possibility. It's just not me. But, uh, all in all, I give it a thumbs up. I would definitely recommend it. Just like I said, I have to qualify it a little bit. Probably not for me. So that will wrap us up for this episode of Indie Impressions. I hope you enjoyed this look at dwarfs, and I will definitely urge you to head on over to www.indie-impressions.com. That's my website, and you can get to all of my social media links from there, like my Facebook and Twitters and all of that good stuff. And of course, probably you know that I'm on YouTube because you're hopefully watching me on YouTube. But you may be watching me from the site, which is awesome if you are. Uh, but if you're not, try that too. It's fun. And then you can meet up on the forums and talk about indie games and earn pixels, and maybe eventually get some free stuff out of it too. Uh, I'm still working on it. There's a lot more to go on the website. It's a work in process, but it's doing well so far, and I, I thank you very much for the support and everybody going there, uh, as much as you have already, because it's definitely been a really positive reinforcement that this is something that uh, you guys appreciate, and, you know, I love doing it, so it really, everyone wins. I get to look at awesome indie games, you get to look at awesome indie games, we promote the cause, uh, you know, just getting the word out there is really the, the whole point, and having a little bit of fun along the way is, is part of it as well, so I hope that we are accomplishing that goal in your eyes, because I know I, I feel that we are in mine. So thank you again for watching, and I will be back again tomorrow with another episode, as I am every day. Okay, thank you guys, see you later.